Many times people get married and uh, before you know it, the, the marriage is lifeless, there is no fun. And uh, all they talk about is we are making money, we are trying to make money. What is that money you're making that the marriage eventually dies and that there is no fun at all? Join me this day as I share with you the three rules for fun in marriage. Three rules for fun in marriage. And I'll, I'll, uh, we'll later look at the results as to why I had to convince the British Embassy, no, the mighty British Embassy, to give me a visa so that I can join my husband in London so that we can make our marriage work. 30 years down the road, I am happy I made that decision. How did I do it? Anyone can make it. Let's look at the three rules for fun in marriage. Rule number one, a woman never grows old. Well, I've seen some ladies, you know, they get married just after one year. They, oh, Manange, you're a married woman. They talk about fun. They're like, yeah, I'm a married woman. They change their dressing. You know, they wake up and everything is about married woman. Eventually, they start tying their head with pieces of cloth and tying wrappers around themselves. And the story they are talking about is a married woman. What do I mean when I say a woman never grows old? A woman, there is that little girl in you, that little girl that wants fun, that little girl that wants to be adventurous, that little girl that wants to be smart, that girl that wants to be good looking. Now, when you suffocate that little girl and you want to act mature, you want to act old woman, you want to dress up long dresses, big, huge dresses, and the little girl suffocates within you, let me tell you, dating will stop there. Am I talking about dressing indecently? No. I am talking about taking care of yourself and the things that you loved as a girl, which made you the person that attracted your spouse. Those are the things you must never drop. Now, the moment you stop, stop being that girl is the moment he will stop dating you. Look at me, I am 54. Do I stop being the little girl? No, I still do the fun. I still dance, put on the music in the house and you know, dance even when I don't know how to dance, but I will dance, I will have fun. I will dress well, I will take care of myself. Being 54, I consider that as just a number, just a number, but the little girl in me will not die will not suffocate. And guess what? I am one of the ladies that my husband will date every day. He will date me, he will date me, he will keep chasing after me because I do not want to grow old. Well, it's okay to be mature, to think mature, and I really think mature, I plan mature. But the fun part of me is just a little girl, you know, tied up, bottled up in a, a 40, 54, 54 year old body. But inside me is a little princess that gets fun, that gets funky, that gets dancing all the time. So that's rule number one. Rule number two, discover each other's love language and work with that. What is it that your spouse adores. What is their love language? How do they feel loved? Every time you're talking, every time you're in the house, every time they're out there for work, what is their love language? What do they, yeah, how do they understand that you're loving? I know some ladies who keep asking, how can I tell that you love me? You know you're doing these things. I don't think you love me. You keep asking for love, and the gentleman also wants you to prove that that you love him. That can only be sorted out by understanding the love each other's love language. And when you understand each other's love love language, work with that. For instance, there's some ladies who love gifts that you know. Even when you have disappointed her, you've done so many wrong things. Uh, when you, even if you don't say sorry, if you bring a gift, 
she will be okay. She will understand. But don't think all women are like that. There are those who will want you to speak. You know, you've made a mistake, you've wronged her, you've disappointed her. She will want to hear the word, I'm sorry. Now, if you have such, even if you bring a gift, she'll throw it away. There are some men who will forgive you anything for as long as you, okay, you've done this mistake, so you come back, make a very good, delicious meal, present it, and they will, you know, leave it. But there are those who will want you to apologize and promise that you'll not do it again. Ah, they want you to wash their clothes to show that you love them. They want you to... So whatever language of love your spouse understands, discover it and use it and have fun. If your spouse loves gifts, bring them. If she loves to be hugged and touched, do it. If this person's love language is sex, do it. You know, do it and do it good so that you are speaking a language that each one of you will understand. Now, the third one, the third thing that you must never, rule number three, is you must be adventurous. You must be adventurous when you're making love. You know, sit down and discuss the different love styles. Many times, you know, you just get the lady, put her on the bed, put one hand here, the other one there, the one leg here, the other one there. You crucify her practically. And then you are in there after a couple of minutes, you are off. Then she remains there hanging. That is not adventure. Adventure is sitting down and you're like, okay, so yesterday we did it in bed. Where can we do it that is exciting today? Can you risk and do it in the corridor? Now, let me tell you people, men enjoy uh, that sex that is very risky. Okay, in the corridor, just close the door. You don't want people to hear you. And you know, you just get adventurous. Can you carry a mattress in your bedroom and sit on that mattress and, you know, on the floor and do what you need to do? Can you stand by the corner of the wall in your room somewhere? Or can you even try risking it in the sitting room, risking it in the kitchen? Anywhere that you feel is adventurous. Go there and do it and discuss it and accept to try something new. Discuss it so that, you know, someone doesn't wake up and is like, where did you learn this from? I have met so many men who are like, okay, I want to try this new in my counseling sessions. I want to try this new, but I fear my wife will think that I am now I've been cheating on her. And so in that case, I call both of them and I talk about, you know, adventure in lovemaking. Now, some women, when they touch you, you're like, ah, I have a headache. Go, girl. He's not asking for your head. What he's asking for is very different. So don't deny him. Be adventurous. Let him look. Let him admire. Let him get different positions. And when you have had this adventure, at the end of it all, there will always be fun and more fun in this marriage. I had to travel all the way to London to join my husband, just to make sure I don't miss out on this fun that I have talked to you about. If I can spend money, he can spend money. I go on to convince the British Embassy about my desire to go and meet my husband for fun. And good enough, I came back. I, I, within the stipulated time, I came back. So what about you? Hmm? Enjoy that marriage. Let it be fun. And you will thank me later. Please remember to subscribe. Remember to like this video and to leave a comment. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. See you another time.